<laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he'll learn. He hasn't seen me break away yet. So. I'll, I'll go through. I'm gonna go through it all again just to sort it, and if I find anything, then I'll let you know. Uh, where is my tripod at? Or this? Do I need it a little higher? I think I did it over here. Uh -huh. Here we go. Give me a second, guys. I'm almost there. Now the channel now, guys. Give me a second. Oh wow! It didn't let me save the picture. So, hmm. Okay. All right. What's up, Ray? Uh, M R Flippin Pam. All right. Okay. So I'm um, breaking weights, guys. Today. So let's see. I wish this could go just a hair lower. Y'all can see the, well, y'all can kind of see the weights, but it ain't as much. So what's up, Cobra? How you doing? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So breaking weight over here. My guys are about to head back out there to go um, for weights. Kind of slow down just a hair enough for us to kind of breathe, but um, I definitely want to keep them turning and burning on the weight so that way when we have our weight orders, we're not worried about pulling the order and getting it out there and stuff like that. So, oh yeah. Now, but uh, I do see a lot of y'all that are already commenting on the, that video, guys. Um, it was at 51,000 views this morning, but I'll check it here in a little bit, see if it's gone up since then, because uh, definitely that's, that's really going to help us get a big bonus. And so, let's see. Yep, yeah, no, shaving the beard is not an option, boss. Not an option. I went so many decades without a beard because I was forced to, you know. So now I can do what I want. And so, and guys, I can, you know, I can take jokes as long as they're not cussing, boss. You know what I mean? Um, I definitely want people to enjoy coming to the channel and being able to horse play with us. But again, as long as that ain't disrespectful, then we can definitely check that out. Uh, let me see that real quick and get out again. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, I can't even read it. The uh, parts in the way. Somebody needs to comment again so I can move up so I can read the full comment. You are a still can't see it. Come on, somebody comment. Uh, oh, it's not refreshing over here. Give me a second, guys. There's up to 26 of y'all. There it goes. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Well, it, it's not always getting to go fishing, guys. This is part of the 
behind the scenes of what a tackle shop has to do to make it happen, especially since we manufacture our own fishing tackle. Yep, definitely is not always glamorous. It is hard work. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's up, Hustle? How you doing? Mm -hmm. Actually, set up my counter so I can break the weights and stuff. Twelve crap coffee this morning. Very nice. And I always have to catch myself every time I say crappie because I always want to say crappy. And, and it's not me being negative. It's just, you know, I'm enunciating the, <laughs> the word and stuff like that. So I'm sorry if it, if it, if it sounds that way. But no, no definitely uh, my buddy Damon, he's my shark fishing partner. Uh, he's out there doing the crappie tournaments and stuff like that. And he's he's moving up really quick, but he's... He's very proficient, very technical on what he's doing. And then, you know, the, his buddy or his teammate that he's hooking up with for those crappie tournaments, they're really putting down the work over there and stuff like that. So, yeah, very, very good dude. Very, very good dude. So, and just a second there. Uh, yeah, yeah. How long, how long were you out there fishing? this because they poured all the most so we got five ounce coin two three four five ounce coin and sixes as well so while i'm going through this i'm going to separate them in their sizes to try to keep uh that way i don't have to do it at the end of the night or at the end of the day um yeah uh, let's see a gator smash a huge cat oh wow so, uh, okay, so the gator, were you bullet in the catfish when it happened, or you saw him, you know, come up with it and start devouring it? <laughs> Detroit, what's up, boss? It is doing good. I'm finally finish the the smaller projects that I had here uh, in front of me so I can have enough room to start getting into the sur um, the regular weights and the surf weights and actually I forgot to tell them to do one specific job and I was telling myself to remind them to do it before they took off over there to the other site so definitely I'll probably end up doing that later on today when they come back Oh. Yeah, no, and and out of the many times that we're out there fishing, and we see all the you know alligators do what they do, or a shark come up and do what they do, like it, you know, it's one of the things that you know you do relish the moment when it does come up and you see it and stuff like that. It just it really is pretty crazy when it does happen. So, yeah. Came up with it on the bank and damn it. How big was the gator if it came up with that big of a catfish? <laughs> That's the other thing. Like, wow. Um, right now, there's only three hands that I got in the production of uh, our tackle. Got one, one gentleman that's working on basically leaders all day. Um, and then the other two are Jeff and the new worker. So Jeff's over there training the new guy on how to pour lead and stuff like that. And definitely going to have to go out there. Uh, I'm going to give him a few days to get kind of acclimated. And then I'll go out there and see what he's about and stuff like that. I uh, haven't had a chance to really talk to Jeff to see where he's at. But he does, you know, understand what I'm looking for out of a worker. Because he's actually done... Uh, welding positions and being a hand with that so he knows the 
you know, the heat portion of it, so that shouldn't be a hard deal. Yeah, now we're, they're pouring anywhere from four to seven hours a day. Um, and with two of them, you know, he's training him how to do it and helping him along the way, so uh, definitely, definitely a, a process. So. I'm just glad we finally got some of the production molds in, like I said, for the two-ounce pyramid. Um, we can actually pour quite a bit at one time now, so it'll definitely make our job a lot easier. And uh, But I'm definitely going to have to invest in some more and bigger molds as you know we continue to grow and do what we got to do over here. So Yes, yes, that is a major thing right there for sure. Like I said, at the end of the day, that's what we'll see. <laughs> you know, you can only hope that, you know, they come in with that ambition and it stays. It doesn't just get wore out, you know, after a week or two, you know. The new job, you know, feeling goes away, kind of like a new vehicle feeling goes away and start not giving it everything and stuff like that, so. Hmm. I have a video of the, uh, the Gator. I'm at no smaller than six foot. That's still a pretty, pretty big cat for a gator like that. Because I mean, even at six foot, you know, tails what three foot in length and stuff. So it's about half the length, or if not a little more. Mm -hmm. If not, this guy who will. Oh, yeah, that that's definitely the easy part there. <laughs> Detroit, for sure. Yeah. Good, good seafood and barbecue. Yes, sir. Now, I'll tell you what, though, you know, being in like North Carolina, California, Arizona, um, Missouri, Florida, stuff like that, there's barbecue here in texas is a whole nother ball game especially when we're dealing with mesquite wood that has a very distinct flavor of of what it produces when you're cooking and stuff like that and yeah definitely definitely awesome don't get me wrong the other states can you know they barbecue but not a texas barbecue and the flavor down here is a whole nother ball game uh, oh, man So that would be epic, yeah, no doubt. Um, that's how a few of the molds that we came into contact with was because shops are closing and and uh, end up taking over it and stuff like that. So yes, we do. And actually, I've got beef ribs in my my uh, barbecue videos and stuff. I've done beef, beef, pork. Um, yeah, trying to, two ones. looks like I might need some more pans for the weights that I'm doing because they've got an assortment, quite an assortment of gear that they were producing and stuff, so. Yes, beef. I, I like doing beef, pork. I like pork a little more just because it's got more meat on there and it comes off the, the bone a lot easier. Granted, I do cook it a lot longer than I do the beef ribs and stuff, but yeah. That and I guess more of it was like... Um, what was I trying to say on that? The... Uh, Normally, like, I, I 
look for the biggest pork ribs. I guess I'm, I'm more partial to that, but my family, they like the little riblets and, you know, the, the ribs and granite, you know, they like to, to pretty much, when they're done with the, the beef ribs, there's nothing but bone on there. There's no cartilage and stuff. And for me, I've always had a problem trying to get all the meat off of there and stuff. But occasionally, if you, you spend that extra time to, to make sure that they're, they're tenderized good enough, um, all the meat will come off the bone and stuff like that. So it definitely works out. Um, <laughs> you, you want lunch? Let me know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, I ended up getting my cereal and ice cream last night and milk. That was awesome. That definitely hit the spot. So. Yeah, that, that, that's where you have a lot of people, you know. Even then, too, you also have the guys that uh, they like a dry rub and then others like a wet rub. And I actually, you know, I'll do both depending. I like wet. I like I like mine to be, you know, have a nice glaze over it and where you can lick your fingers and stuff like that and try not to bite them off. But uh, my family, my wife's family, they like dry rubs. So I got to make both when I do cook because obviously if I'm cooking, I'm getting my my <laughs> my uh, wet rubs on there and stuff like that too. So um, and definitely with that, it's always you know at the end of, of the deal once I got the dry rubs going and stuff, then I'll produce the uh, the wet rub ones. So I actually have my own uh, uh, barbecue sauce that I mix up from you know Worcestershire soy. Um, Lemon juice. Uh, I also use grape uh, grape uh, jelly and uh, Ruby's uh, barbecue sauce, and I mix it all up together in certain proportions. And I make what they call Papa Bear sauce. So, yeah, that's that's my sauce right there. A few of the guys that have eaten barbecue here at the shop know what sauce I'm talking about. And, yeah, it's different, but it's good. And a nice little sweet taste to it with still a little bit of spice and kick. Very, very nice. Yeah. And actually, I started trying wet rubs when I was, uh, as a kid, you know. Uh, I loved pico de gallo, you know what I mean? And so one day I was like, man, I wonder how, how this would taste when I was, you know, on the meat already coming off the grill. And I did it one time and it freaked everybody out. It was, it was something different. And it was still, they ate it all. Like, it was awesome. So, and ever since then, I've, I've, I always do make some of the, the wet ones. And it's nice. Nice. I'm making my mouth water over here. Boy. It spit out a little bit. I don't know if y'all saw it there for a minute. <laughs> Let's see. What's up, John? How you doing, boss? Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. But again, you know, every, it's like fishing. Everybody has a different style of formula of what makes them happy on it and stuff. So, yeah. No, I definitely, I definitely like trying different kind of uh, dry rubs for the wife and kids and stuff that they like those. Me, I'm doing the same thing with my wet, wet rub. Ugh. Wet rubs. <laughs> I am uh, getting, yeah, man. That and I got shark I got to cook up, too. I still got, got that in the cooler. Um, the rest, I already started prepping it so I can uh, put it in the freezer and store it. So, yeah. <laughs> right, John? Yep. I'm, I'm sitting here talking about it, and I'm wishing I was cooking it. Yeah. But y'all did see the big old lot of bar, uh, mesquite wood that I was able to get my hands on. And actually, that's what kind of messed me up, too, because when I was moving those big old chunks, I was trying to do it as quickly as possible. So I was making some pretty big old chunks. I didn't get to record it like I wanted it to, but I was kind of in a hurry and on a time 
time limit because I was trying to get it done because it was on Sunday. And there I was working, working again on a Sunday. So. Mm. What's up, Jacob? What's up, Daniel? How you doing? And actually, uh, oh, okay. Well, when you get him all set up, let me know. I did send you a link. I don't know if, uh, I didn't know if you were ready or not to get on the channel and stuff, so. Daniel, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, I, I can't wait till Jacob get uh, gets on that. But yeah, no, um, definitely. If you need need a little help with uh, getting that uh, set up, let me know. I know the guys on the channel want to want to help out too, so we can do definitely do a little fundraiser to get that kick started. Definitely game for that. Buddy, Daniel, Daniel. It's going. It's definitely going over here. I'm uh, also too going to be doing some casting here pretty soon, uh, but I don't know. We got some some foul weather coming in, so it may postpone it for a few days while everything dries back up again. Because going out there in the field when it's wet, it really does. <laughs> it wears you down because you're towing so much mud on your your boots or your Crocs and stuff like that, and then the weight really embeds itself. So. What's up, Jaime? How you doing? Uh, yep, firing time. That that <laughs> like I'm so excited for that. That was a really excellent idea to to get Daniel on on a shirt. You're fired. <laughs> I'm really excited. I want to get that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we are. I get to go home. Time to go. Maybe I can go fishing. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. So if y'all don't know and y'all are new to the channel, Daniel is Jacob's son. And um, he's special needs and i mean i don't know if i'm saying that correctly but yes he is a very awesome young man and um uh, and he definitely comes on the channel and cracks the whip and gets us all fired and stuff so <laughs> he's very hard to please he's a very tough boss <laughs> oh, <yeah. clears throat> me too please <laughs> right let's see What's up, John? How you doing? Yeah. So how's Monkey doing, John? Uh, I was with my jig guy yesterday. He was telling me that some kind of clean lead he tosses only. When I'm six. Okay. When, no. You should not be losing that much. You actually should be gaining. Um, you should be gaining. Well, okay. Well, let me be a little more clear. What kind of lead is he using? Is he um, um, getting it to where it has a lot of, of 
mixed metals in there. Because what ends up happening too, if he has a lot of mixed metals, say aluminum, tin, and uh, other kind of uh, lighter metals that do melt at that, that temperature, um, what ends up happening is that will settle at the bottom or the, the lead will settle at the bottom and those other lighter metals will settle on top. So by the time he, he, he's done pouring, um, he can lose a lot. So that, that tells you there's a lot of trash lead in there. And then also, too, if, it, if, if there's a lot of trash and debris and stuff that, yeah, obviously it's going to throw off the weight at the end, but it shouldn't be four ounces that you lose per, per pound. I mean, if it is, that's some really trashy lead. But if it's already been melted down once, then you shouldn't be losing losing that at all. And actually, you should be gaining weight because you got to remember you're adding in hooks, the jig, uh, the hooks to those jig heads. So at the end of the day, you're actually, you got the pound of lead and then you got 16 hooks on top of that. So you actually should be gaining a lot more on that right there. So, mm. yeah, it, it has to be really, really dirty lead because, I mean, um, that's the only thing I can think of at that point. You know what I mean? So, yeah, no, you don't, you don't lose that much. You actually will gain. If it's, if it's clean lead, good lead, then you'll actually gain. You don't, you don't melt down and lose weight. Yeah. Because even then, like I said, all of this gets remelted right back down. So now, okay, now here's the thing. If he does pour out a pound of weight, say he's using a one pound, uh, the little two pound bowl to, to pour the weight, puts one pound in there, and then he pours all these jackets, yes, he will only get, say, the 12. The reason being because you still have this on the top end of the, the jig head. So if, if all of that, and he cuts all of that off, he's supposed to remelt that and make more weight with it. If he's not doing that, then he's keeping that portion. So you're getting one ounce here and you're losing a half ounce on every one of them. So that's the that's probably the other reason why he's saying he's only getting that on there. But what he doesn't realize is he, he well, he, he probably knows what he's doing. You know, he's pocketing the rest of that and stuff like that. So. That's, that's something else to think about, because remember how I weighed out, like, you know, I got four ounces of lead there, but let me show you something. <laughs> and I know y'all know what I'm talking about, but I'm just doing this test for the guys that don't know what I'm talking about. So that's two two-ounce pyramids. And waiting for that to zero out, zero it out. So two two-ounces, right? So that should be four. Looking at seven ounces right there, or seven and a half. So I've got two and a half ounces sitting right here on the top end of that. So that's probably why he's only getting 12 one ounces out of that one pound because of the extra slag that's on top. But all of that gets melted down. It's not like, now if he's telling you he's losing it completely and you can only get that for that. Is he keeping that or... Not remelting it, like I mean, I gotta gotta explain that comment just a, li a little more for me to understand. All right, cool deal. Hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've done it. Done the math, and I've had to take it to that level to be able to understand. You know, like. <clears throat> how much I'm going to get after each pour and stuff. And this will always, this will always vary because look, this is a three ounce. But look how thick that, that top end of that lead is. That's pretty thick. So that's probably another three ounces sitting right there. Okay, so even when he's throwing the wax in, and and taking off all the slag and all of that, it, it, it depends how dirty it is. Now, once he cut pours that weight, is he remelting those portions and producing weights out of those, or is he throwing it off to the side and not reusing it? If he's not reusing it, he's throwing away lead. Like
No worries, Jacob. End of your business, brother. Uh, ooh yeah, see, Patrick, Patrick always laying it on us here, man. He, he's always doing some kind of cooking and telling us what he's cooking and yeah. <laughs> Domino's Pizza. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, Dusty. Hard Life. That would be that would be me right now since Jeff's out of the shop, so. Yes, um, if you're doing that, you're going to be doing land bait shark fishing. I personally like the shorter rods, like seven and a half foot at max, and do an 81 30 pound class rod to pair it up with will give you um, that little bit of bow that you like, you know, to compensate for a monster hit, but also to give you enough backlash. So when you start cranking on that reel, it will get that fish moving, and or when you don't catch anything, get that weight moving. So that way you can pull it in quicker. Yes, we do. My only question is why it's a 200 pound top shot. I know the T Rex 80 has, you know, 130 pounds of drag and stuff like that, but are you really going to be putting that much amount of drag when you're fighting a shark? in Matagorda and we didn't have any problems with the 130 when we were out there it actually stayed very well too so um, but going with the 200 for more abrasion resistance um, we definitely can see that except it's going to eat up on your line capacity so depending on how much of the 200 you want on top shot will determine how much we can put on as you're filling Real quick, what kind of weight does this, or is it able to carry and stuff like that? I'm not real familiar with all the drones that are coming out and their weights and classes and stuff like that. So, seven pounds. Okay, so that's going to be the other thing you're going to have to, to contend with too. When you go with the heavier test line, it also creates drag, wind drag, air drag, and all of that when you're trying to carry it and take it out, you know, certain distances. So if you're trying to run deeper, you're going to reach less, you're going to have less ability to do that because the weight of the line. However, the 130, even uh, I experienced this when I was kayaking, the 130, I definitely could hit, you know, a, a lot further distance without feeling, feeling weighted down and or thumbed on the spool. And so, me personally, if, you, if you're looking for that, it would go with the 130. But if you're not too concerned with it, then the 200 will, will, will work too, just because like I said it's not really something that you think uh, you'll have a problem with. Okay, give me just a second. All right, give me a second. Oh. 
no women do that. Like they can sit on the phone for like hours and my neck's already creaking up on me and <laughs> all right, give me a second, guys. All right. Uh, what was that boss? I had the phone away from my uh, ear. Y yes. No doubt. All right, boss. Uh, what was your name again? Yes, sir, that you did. Uh, what's your phone number? Okay, we're looking for a T-Rex 80. And what color are you looking for? Okay. All right. So we're gonna do the one thirty uh, in red for the for the warning, and then uh, what what uh, middle line would you like? Or or actually, we can do both. We can do like a top shot, say like six hundred yards. I mean, I mean, obviously you got the drone, uh, but also too, once the fish does takes off, pulls off a lot of line and pulls, you start getting it close. You at least know that you're in at you know, uh, you know, the six hundred yards or whatever. It. Well, uh, well, he has red, orange, pink, white, blue, uh, black, uh, gold, uh, red, white, and blue. Oh, okay. Yeah, the tartreuse, the orange, um, those two are the brighter lines that I would go with. So, uh, all right, and um, okay, so let, let me do this. Once we kind of find out what they have available with Abbott, say they they only have the gun metal, then we'll pick and choose the colors to best complement the reel. And then, you know, and then we can do that with the red and the blue reel and go from there. Um, but yeah, we can, we'll, we'll do that. And then you want the, on the rod, looking for an 80, 130, the unibud and rollers. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Let me let me look into that. And uh, okay. Well, I'll I'll work on this. It'll be a little bit so I can get um, the pricing on the rail cover and rod cover and stuff like that. Um, the pipe and plate, and then I can give you a call probably in a few hours once I'm done with my live video. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm thinking we can make this happen before the end of May, so that way, um, yeah, no, stuff like this, I like to get on quickly, so that way it's one less stress that you're worried about and stuff like that, and um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll definitely give you a call here in a while. Yes, sir. All right. Bye -bye. All right. Cool. That will be for an ADT Rex with a shark rod on there. And I've missed quite a bit of comments. I wasn't seeing them. So let me backtrack a little bit. Um, shark, hammerhead, good eating. Yeah. Um, the 
this girl has been around. Got it. Um, actually, we've already, that's probably like our 30th or 40th scale. What's up, boss? Live on the channel. Um, 20, 30, 50, 60, 65, 80, 100, 130, 200, 300, 700. You didn't hear none of that? <laughs> yeah. Are you there? 20, 30, 50, 60, 65, 80, 100, 130, 200, 150, and uh, 300, 700. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll talk when you get here, boss, because I'm live on the channel and I'm all I'm doing is listening to you. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> okay, later. <laughs> He's going to repeat himself again once he gets in here. So I figured he might as well just say it one time. <laughs> All right. Uh, lead because when our fish said it would supply the lead. If the guy who bought the lead said he paid 350 Whoa, 350 a pound for it? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he did because, um, yeah, I could, I could sell you lead clean a lot cheaper than that per pound at least a dollar cheaper per pound um wow mm. yeah that that's that's really expensive right there and to to be honest uh <laughs> John, don't lie. You can't count to a thousand on your own. <laughs> uh, yes, let's see. Yeah, no, it, I, I could definitely supply you with lead a lot cheaper than that. Um, damn, that, that, yeah, that's really expensive. That is really expensive. So, But also, too, I'm buying lead, you know, at two and four thousand, eight thousand pounds at a time. So I do get a pretty decent deal on it and stuff like that. But again, too, I do have to invest my time into breaking it down, time, propane, you know, and all of that to get it to, to break down in those smaller chunks and stuff like that. So um, now the other thing is, too, would you need it in like smaller batches or you can you use like a, you know, 20 pound bricks at a time? Mm -hmm. I'm definitely gonna have to get some more trays because I'm running out of uh, <laughs> not not just trays but uh, space on what have to be able to sort these weights on and stuff like that especially when since i'm doing the two ounce pyramids um well let me give you an idea so got two ounce coins one ounce claw two ounce claw and i got three ounce claw three ounce coin four ounce coin four ounce claw six ounce coin two ounce pyramid uh we also have six ounce claw Six ounce claw, eight ounce claw, and five ounce coin. So, and then we still have this tray, and we got like five or six more trays to go through. But I think I'm gonna have to. As you saw this, and this is almost full, so I can go put this in up real quick.
And just to give you an idea, I also weighed that pan. That one had 21 pounds of weight. I'll be keeping track of that as well, just to see how much lead they produced the, for the several days they've been over there. Oh man, let's see. Oh, I got out of here. Uh, William, what's up, brother? How you doing? Uh, Semper Fly, Raptor Claw. Hey, <laughs> you got a new one? Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Come on, but I'm not feeling like a cook. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely might need some range time. So. Definitely could be a lot of fun. <laughs> hey, you know, that, that, that could be uh, used for monkey for uh, PE. <laughs> Yeah, that math. Uh, what else? It could be. Um, economics. <laughs> you can use it for a whole bunch of things. Yeah. At lunch at work. How's that going for you, William? I know I know you've been out for so long, so. Yeah. Yeah, and I know uh, bass. Well, I don't know um, if they do, but I know that Do It Molds was selling blocks, five pound blocks of lead. Um, I don't remember the cost on it. I'm not going to say it was cheap. I don't uh, want to say it was pretty pretty expensive at that point, and I was unwilling to buy it. So, especially if I'm trying to sell it, basically. Price I'm selling it. That's what I sell as a finished weight to to tackle shops. So they buy it from the by the pound like that at that price because obviously they're buying it in you know bulk. So yeah, tell me to stop. I bet. Yeah, I bet. Uh, Time is science class ballistics 101. There you go. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Let's see. I am, uh, can't wait to get through these, these trays because I'm going to figure out how much weight is poured, and that way, too, they can have a read on how much weight they're putting out. And then we can figure it out, figure out the the math on it, and see if they're holding their weight. That's gonna be the biggest thing right there. So it definitely does help to do that. But also too, I'm gonna have to take in the weight that they have uh, already cleaned up too, and add that in and go check that weight. But I also had to teach him about the blend weights too when it doesn't fully form like that one that we're not throwing them away and so, so that way we can um, use them as blemish models and you can buy it by the pound that way. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? Yeah, since there's quite a bit of you on the channel real quick, let's go and check the numbers on that video. Grab this other phone because it got a clear screen on it. <laughs> um, it was at 51,000 this morning. And it's at 54,000 now. Well, no, it says 57 right here. It says 57,000 views right there. So it, it's kind of slowed down tremendously. So we definitely got to keep on it and commenting on the channel. I know there's some... Um, comments in there in foreign languages and stuff like that. So if y'all have the knowledge to help out with those comments, um, definitely by all means, let's, let's do that. Um, or if y'all can research and translate them for the rest of us, so that way we know what they're saying, 
definitely will help. Now, again, guys, you know, there's not there's going to be some guys that don't agree with what we have done. But it wasn't like I went out there intentionally to kill the shark, but it was the hand that I was dealt. So I worked with it and was able to save the pups. Um, definitely going to have to share the knowledge with a lot of guys because some of them were believing that um, sharks actually take care of the young like uh, mammals do and other uh, reptiles, but they don't. <coughs> so don't take offense, guys. Don't take offense. A lot of people really don't know. I mean, and we're probably going to get some crusty guys in there that, you know, their they're way's the only way kind of deal, which is fine. Because right now, we're looking for the views to get us more subscribers to the channel, and then we'll start weeding them out again. And it's a process, guys. That's kind of what we went through the last time when we got our last 10,000 subs in a month. Um, it's going to be a great way for us to do that, but it's also going to get us to our 25,000 subscriber mark giveaway a lot faster. Definitely looking forward to it. So we'll see. That's what the military is saying every time we go. Yeah, no. I definitely would. Uh, that was a great idea that I think Cobra is the one who said it, that we should get. Uh, and actually that or Patrick, one of the two was talking about that we should set up the boat, you know, for one of those big trips. I know for uh, for the team and also, you know, to do it with a bunch of vets to go out there and fish with them. But I definitely if we did with a bunch of vets like that, it would definitely have to be a mix with the team in order for us to uh i would have to say to, to really be able to enjoy ourselves with those guys and give them a a good opportunity to handle some monster fish and stuff like that too so definitely would be cool definitely would would be cool so. mm. I'm mad. Holiday's getting up there. <laughs> we definitely would have to do... I would love to do a video with Holiday um, while he's doing what he's doing and even when he busts out working with the claw and stuff like that just because we got a lot of kids that watch the channel too. So definitely getting them to, to come in and, and enjoy the fun that we can have as adults, you know, uh, is pretty awesome. So that's what makes it definitely will make the learning fun right there too and i have to admit too i do i do get a kick out of watching you work with the claw and <laughs> tell your stories and stuff like that so yeah yeah <laughs> it's still on his soul <laughs> oh it's <that's> too funny <laughs> well that that was with uh the Barney deal, bro. Like you brought that in. Come on, no. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, remember, guys, we're doing our twenty-five thousand subscriber mark giveaway, and it is going to be including a participation um, fishing trip on top of it, and that's for the guys that are going above and beyond sharing. Uh, the videos and stuff like that, um, the links for our 20, 25K giveaway. So if you are getting in there and you're putting that, be prepared to be have your name called. And it is not part of the 25 winners. This is a bonus that I am throwing in as an appreciation for those that are putting forth the crazy amount of effort to get more subscribers to our channel. But I do have another giveaway, too, that's going to happen with the uh, video short, I posted up the video link in the live yesterday talking about the video. It's about our, uh, if somebody could share that video link would be awesome. Uh, what we're trying to do is make sure it keeps going up. Right now it's at 57,000 views and we'd like to see that one get to a million. So it would be awesome. So the only way to do that is for everybody to keep commenting on there every day. 
um, that it's up there, you know, on everybody's comment. And the more times you comment on there, the better chances you are to win uh, for our giveaway. We're going to have Hard Life swag, leaders, and yeah, it, it's going to be it's going to be a sweet, sweet package deal. And this is not part of the 25K. This is strictly for that video. The entries will end on Friday as uh, we do our fire drawing. I'm going to select another winner for that. So our Friday drawing is going to be very interesting. We're going to have a lot of prizes going out. And I look forward to it and see how our, our fire drawing does too. So, Yes, sir. <laughs> it is channel is John Holiday. <laughs> he sharpens knives, guys, and <laughs> you you'll have fun on there. You will have fun. <laughs> Oh, I, know, I know William is putting forth the effort. Now, I can see somebody else put that much effort in there would be a phenomenal, crazy event because I know Jaime, um, uh, Bluegrass, and uh, Ray have been doing a lot of the videos, uh, sharing and stuff like that, and doing the email on there. That's how we're keeping track, guys. Is These guys are taking screenshots of what they've been doing and submitting them to the email. And so it allows me a chance to go over there and see where you're sharing it and stuff like that and verify that it's gone on there. Uh, I know for a period there that some of the guys were being blocked because they were thought they were being bots that were um, uh, bombarding a channel or whatever. So, yeah. What's my number one fish to catch besides sharks? Ooh, that is tough. That is real tough. Um, I would have to say kingfish, you know, fishing slide lines, because there you can see the fish come up, take a bait, and just go screaming off the reel. So that is that's probably my next style of fishing. To have one specific fish is it that's hard. That is really, really hard. So Yeah, I also you know, love love catching flounder when I can catch those, but it's not a fish that I sit there and target you know uh all the time just because most of the time when that's available, I'm not able to break away and get on it and stuff like that. But I do I do I do look for it. So but my favorite style would have to be kingfishing, that for sure. Because you set up a bait out there, and then, you know, it, it, it is one of them that will try your patience beyond belief. Because you're working with wind, you're working with waves, you're trying to keep this bait alive on the surface. And, and it, it, it's a lot of work you put into it when the conditions are not perfect, you know what I mean? And, and in reality... I've actually caught a lot more fish when the conditions aren't perfect. So, yeah, slide, slide lining is probably one of my favorite styles of fishing for sure. So, damn man. All right. Yes, sir. And remember that 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 um, that hashtag shop the real deal, guys, on every comment and anywhere, anywhere you, you you are you're commenting to the videos and stuff like that. If you can add that into your comments, it is really going to help us get help from YouTube to really create the channel and push it because it's a new advertising deal that they are doing on the channel and those channels that are participating on that and it's really, it's going to help us out. It's going to help us. So by helping us, we can help you back by getting more, more gifts and raising more money 
And again, you know, all these prizes that we give away still come out of our pocket, but because the amount of effort that y'all are putting into the channel to keep us growing, YouTube pays us. So you, by YouTube paying us, we turn around and pay it forward. So you're earning it, guys. Y'all are definitely earning it for sure. So. Now, no, you, you're sure right on that, John. There's a lot of fish that are on my bucket list. Sturgeon is definitely high on that bucket list. You know, I, yeah, don't get me wrong, guys. Just because I'm over here in salt water and I'm kind of land, like I'm landlocked too. <laughs> I'm kind of landlocked over here to the style of fishing I do because of the amount of time that I do have to play with. And y'all can see because the amount of work that's getting put in, but once we can get enough workers to free me from being here, then we can definitely make it happen. So definitely be looking forward to it. Uh, oh, for our subscribers, let me check. I don't know where our subscribers is. Yesterday we needed 175 subscribers. And we're at 122 more. We need 122 more to get to 25,000 subscribers. So it is coming, guys. It can literally happen overnight to get to that number. So y'all are running out of time. Running out of time. <laughs> Yes, yes. And again, guys, like I said, without y'all being proactive on the channel the way y'all have been, it would definitely have made this extremely hard to continue, you know, being hit with the economy the way it has been and, you know, time and effort and all of that, you know, y'all have definitely kept the motivation there, guys. For sure. so big pat on y'all's backs too, man. Again, like without y'all, we definitely... We wouldn't have it in us to keep doing it. So I, I do appreciate it, and I'm very humbled by the amount of love and support I'm getting with y'all on the channel. Um, now we've got <laughs> we got the 25k giveaway. We've got that video short giveaway. We've got um, the participation award giveaway. Like we got a lot of giveaways coming back, guys. So I'm excited. I'm excited. And then to see who's going to get on top with those those different giveaways. Ooh. And yes, guys, you can win multiple times on these events. So be on the lookout. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty awesome. You cannot buy your way in. You gotta earn your way in. So it's gonna be pretty awesome. And I I know <laughs> I know William. He's like me when he sets a goal, he goes after it. So yeah, no doubt, no doubt on that. So. Getting notifications over here. Got to see what it is. All right, give me a second, guys. I got to write out a check for the tackle that's coming in. So give me a second. Oh, good deal. Got that.
All right. So I just read um, Hyman's comment, and yes, I'm, uh, this is kind of something I was talking about a little while ago. Yeah, if y'all want to put together, you know, a fire drawing or a, actually a donations or something, um, it would have to be donations because obviously with the fire drawing, you know, y'all y'all end up winning something. But I would l really like to help uh, Jacob create those shirts and stickers of his son firing everybody. And then raising money to help out, you know, the groups that they want to help out with. I'm definitely game for that, guys. I really am. So, if y'all are game to help out, uh, we can definitely do it and make it happen. Uh, a second. I'm in another tray. You're right, John. We definitely need those thumbs up because that's um, part of what makes the channel grow. You know, a lot of thumbs up on the channel gets us more video or more people into the videos and stuff like that. So, yeah, definitely rocking and rolling it. Four or fives, okay. Okay. All right, William, you have a good day, boss. Stay safe. <laughs> Let's see. So, also, too, guys, if y'all want to make those donations through the the uh, the cash app, would probably be the best one because y'all can put gift on there. Because um, I know through the the channel here, um, I'm probably going to end up paying like thirty percent interest or thirty percent in taxes because of that. Um, so definitely, um, cash app would probably be the best idea for this to make it happen. Um, but yeah, yeah, well, I'm, I'm game for that. And I know that will definitely ease the ability for him to do that and stuff like that. And then also to increase the amount that he can actually donate and stuff like that. Cause obviously, you know, I know he would do it out of the kindness of his heart to, um, come out of pocket for that. But, you know, he also... He's running a business, he's paying for his family and stuff like that. So it's definitely um, something that yeah, I'm game to help out. So Team Hard Life on Cash App. <laughs> yes, dollar sign Team Hard Life Cash App. Yes. Please include your cell phone number and also to gift. You got to put in there as gift or, or just put gift um that will ensure that i don't get taxed what the government is trying to do i think it's like 30 percent is what they're talking about they want to tax the uh um the channels like this um uh, cash apps uh the different the different money ways that you're getting paid they, they want to tax it like crazy so um uh, I don't know bluegrass on that one. It, a lot of them, it just sort of kind of sorted itself out. Um, but what you can do is refresh your app or uh, check for updates and see if it, if it did it that way. So. I know for a while there, everybody was unsubbed off the channel, but it didn't show any, like any of our... Um, like some sub subscriber numbers dropping off the channel. It just, I guess it was going through whatever phase it was going through, hating on me for a bit. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. Well, are you still subscribed? I know that was another one too. A lot of people got unsubscribed and they resubscribed themselves. So, did you get unsubscribed again?
And then, yes, guys, um, anybody know if y'all going to be able to attend tomorrow's meeting for the desalinization plant? Um, because that is really important, guys. That is, like I said, I've, I've been talking about it for a while now. But uh, for those of y'all that can attend, please, please let us know. Um, that way we can kind of get a number of who should be able to come out and stuff like that. So um, this is, man, that it is scary to know what, what's going to come of this and how the city and all the businesses that are going to be affected by it and stuff like that. So. <laughs> I see. see that that could be something else too right there how you doing boss oh, okay you got the swivels i've got you a check there's the invoice thank you yes sir yeah you have a good one bob awesome mm -hmm. Gift cards for Mass Pro Cable, part of the fire drawing. If y'all would like to make those those donations of that, that would be awesome. Um, but with the uh, so on those, John, I'm I'm trying to uh, figure out your to answer how to best answer your deal. So with those, would those be like a bonus on top or would that compensate for the amount of uh, fire drawing uh, funds that we or materials that we would come out of our shop with? Uh, I think that's why a lot of people get into it is because their ability to uh, buy the gear from us directly. Uh, but also, too, you know, Jacked Up Leatherworks comes in with with bonus prizes and we do that as part of a. Uh, bonus prizes on there, not really counted against the amount that is won through here at the shop. Bonus, yeah, no, definitely. Shoot, I, I don't mind doing that if they're if somebody's willing to, to send them to us and stuff like that. And would you be coming out of pocket for that, or is that a sponsorship that's coming from somebody that works there? They got the hookup. To get us hooked up with bonus gear like that. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm real curious. Yep, yep. And also, too, guys, there's 36 of y'all that are here, and we only got 16 thumbs up. Am I on? You know, we're trying to we're trying to hit, reach new levels. It, it it also helps with those thumbs up for sure. John, I mean, if somebody wants to make donations like that, I will not turn them down. And even then, too, that. Uh, Depending on on when they come in and stuff like that, we can do the fire drawing and or add them into our giveaway for different levels that we hit when we hit our subscriber marks too. I mean, but again, too, whoever's sending them to us, if they want them in the fire drawings or they want to be real specific on where it goes. Then by all means, uh, we'll respect that. Just throwing ideas out there for whoever wants to send them to us. But also too. For those that are going to, if you're going to have to spend money to buy them there, why don't you buy gift cards from here at Hard Life? And then we can add those in as bonuses right there if y'all want. 
and that would actually help us out a lot better and I know would increase the amount of people getting into the fire drawings if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> I like I like that idea, John. I do like that idea. We're still we're only at nineteen. I mean, there's thirty three of y'all watching. <laughs> He's gonna be putting the band hammer on everybody. <laughs> What's up, Anthony? How you doing, boss? <laughs> there we go. All right, guys, let, let's check y'all's numbers for sure. We got we got Bluegrass. He's number 16. Post up your numbers of your thumbs up. Who's who, who's what? Let's see if uh, YouTube is doubling up on the thumbs up there, too, because right now it says I'm number two. So wondering if it is also playing games with that, too. So. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll be your huckleberry. <laughs> number one, Mr. Tris is number nineteen. All right, so before you post up, refresh. Refresh your screen, see if it updates what the number you're at. I'm going to do the same and let's see if it changes anything on that. <laughs> that was number two. Let's see what it says now. Definitely interested because after what happened yesterday, it's really, really questionable now of what's going on with that, too. And especially that one day, I mean, we got over 162 people active on the channel. And that was like, that was the average number that we hit. Uh, I think it's the way it goes off of. So, mm. Austin, what's up, us? We are here. I'm still breaking weights over here, trying to get these trays done and sorted. So, I wouldn't say I'm going crazy fast, but I am staying productive, and that's very important. The way work gets done, you know what I mean? And yes, I wouldn't say I'm killing myself, but it is. I'm also doing two things at once. I'm sorting the weights so I don't have to stop and do that. Because I do waste time in sorting the weights when it does come up to that one. But I am going to knock it out. And all right. So, yeah, now it says I'm 19. <laughs> I just refreshed it. It went from number two to 19. So I think there's something seriously wrong with the channel. It is. But yes, guys, definitely we want everybody to give us a thumbs up. Obviously. We are working hard for it, man. Working hard. <laughs> Let's see how this goes real quick. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. What's up? No, much, man. I was all knock, knock. That's a choice that I guess you didn't hear. So, um, how's everything going, Bob? I'm doing pretty good. Oh, man. No, I'm over here breaking weights and sorting them at the same time. I already did one one smaller tray. I went and put that up because it was completely filled and had 21 pounds of weight in it. So with the new guy that we got hired, Jeff's over there training him. And uh, I'm going to see how well he's training him because obviously with two guys over there, they should be pumping out quite a bit of lead, you know. Yeah. Texas is 
no eyelid. But you can see it right there at the bottom. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep. Oh, man. All right, so we were kind of talking with the guys here on the channel, and there's a few guys that want to make donations or a, some type of fundraiser to help kick this You're Fired campaign off with Daniel. And I'm definitely game for it. Um, what I was suggesting was that they sent the money to do it through Cash App because doing it through the Super Chat, obviously I'm going to have to pay for that those those funds that way. But they can send, and I just uh, thought about it right now, that instead of sending it to my Cash App as a gift, to send it directly to your Cash App as a gift as well to make to jumpstart this sticker and T-shirt deal. Okay, well, the T-shirts right now, everybody that I've talked to, um, that's I've been on the phone all this morning. I've been trying to uh, get somebody up here that has does the sublimation for the shirts, and there it's it's going to be a little pricey because um, everybody up here does the. What's the price you're getting on the sublimation? Uh, I'm getting anywhere from, let's see, 18 to 21 from small to extra large. And then it goes up two or $3 a size after that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so well, let me, let me make a phone call real quick. So, and to have the stickers would be right around right around two hundred dollars. Okay, okay. And that's for sticker. What's sticking up, Sarah? How you doing? True North in the house. <laughs> they were they were at, they were absent last night. Hello. Hey, oh, Sarah. Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm live on my channel, boss, but. Um, we were talking about getting shirts made, and uh, Buddy had gotten some price. And I said, "Hold on, let me make a phone call real quick." So, so how, how you doing, boss? Oh, we're finally getting here. We were dead in the water for about five months. Hmm. Yeah. I have Detroit and the stickers I got a long time ago from they yeah, were no joke really. on that. No joke on that. But I do have a question for you. And this one I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of explaining of what's going on. I've got a fellow YouTuber that has been one of my channel sponsors since I started. Um, kind of like you, like we we've, we've we've just networked and networked and everything in any way which way. However, he has a special needs son that normally comes on the channel and fires everybody. <laughs> it's awesome. Like, he comes in and fires, fires, fires. Like, everybody's fired, you know? So, we, we everybody on the channel gets a kick out of it. And then one day, they were kind of uh, talking about that, you know, we want to get, you know, stickers done of Daniel, you know, you know, in his little mode, you know, firing people and selling them to raise money for... Uh, special projects with kids of that same caliber and i was like man you know so me and the channel were talking about doing that but he started looking into pricing on shirts like that to get them supplemented because doing stickers obviously they're going to peel they're going to fade and all of that and i said man i got the perfect person but he you know he wanted to check his resources so definitely i'm giving you a call and see if there's any way you can give us a hand on that so um that what was about do 10 years is, ago, Detroit. Um, I guess I'll look him again, him though. Send me a picture of, you know, him uh, him giving us a fired, fired symbol or whatever and see what price we can work out on that and stuff like that because we already got a bunch of people on the channel looking to start buying the shirts and he's going to be donating the proceeds to, you know, special special events and needs, uh, schools and stuff like that around Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, 
Funny, Tara. I don't know. I haven't tried them on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is awesome. She hasn't taken them off, Tara. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I do, I do appreciate that, James. Let me get with uh, Jacob over here. And definitely, you know, as part of this, we would like to put your logo out on our channel and stuff like that. So that way, the guys that know that are helping us will know to go where to go to to go purchase gear and stuff like that because i mean that's the way it works if y'all are y'all are helping us out there's we, we definitely can find ways to help you out as well too so mm -hmm. yeah no, I no, I know, I know, I, I know. You, you didn't even ask. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm de yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna let them know. But again, too, you know, we we, yeah, no, no, we we definitely, like I said, guy uh, James, you've always you've always been there for us here. Uh, so I definitely want to to show ways that we can help you out as well too, because business is hard all the way around, man. And if we don't help each other out, then what what are we doing? You know, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I should have grabbed two pairs, Tara. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God. Mm. Mm. Yeah. help you <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad to hear that <laughs> I'm kind of glad to hear that I really am awesome mm. yeah 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 yeah, yeah no doubt <laughs> Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, let me let me uh, let you go. I'm going to get back with this. I will shoot you an email as soon as we get all of this sorted. But yes, definitely. I am. Hmm. Mm. Let me let me get back with him, but I am thinking we, we're going to have some kind of design on there. Um, but let me get back to you on that as soon as I, I talk with them real quick, and we will get back with you. But yeah, we're definitely interested in making this happen for sure. Oh, awesome, bro. You you continue having a blessed day, brother. <laughs> All right, later, James. Bye bye. All right, so you might want to lower down the TV for this one. Oh, Mike, uh, Daniel's watching TV. Okay, never mind. He'll fire us. Okay, so he's got, okay, obviously he's got dealer pricing, he's got distributor pricing, then he's got fundraiser, like, Pricing like that. 
which basically means he cuts out all of his profit. All we will be paying for is the cost of the shirt, the materials, and the shipping. He will pay his, his artist to create the design or whatever it is, and he will make zero profit. It will all be just what it costs him to obviously not go under, you know what I mean, to, to pay for the materials. So with that being said, um, what we would have to do is figure out what design we want to put on there and stuff like that. And he can do full sublimation all the way around, like my, my scale wear shirts. He can do that and then still put his picture on it and set it all the way up like that. So I... I just kind of thought of like the puzzle pieces, like the puzzle pieces all the way around with Daniel's logo there, but I don't know what his needs are and if they have any kind of design like that to correlate with what he's got or what would be the best way to go that round. Uh, wow. It's, it's the guy that does all my scale wear shirts. My the original sublimated when I got him, that's that's from him, and he actually he owns the business, and uh, this is part of his like his way to help us help do fundraisers and stuff like that too. He actually uh, he was explaining that he did the Ronald McDonald House, and with the amount of logos, they were all embroidered hats, so you know embroidery is expensive right off the bat. But at his price, the Ronald McDonald House was able to make $3,900 more profit for their fundraiser because the amount that he charged was so low. Oh, my God. Yeah. So now we just got to decide how, what kind of logo design do we want to get on his shirts and get it to him, and he'll get us a pricing on it. And again... That's gonna be shoot. That's gonna be way lower than what I get for my shirts. So, problem solved. <laughs> yeah, I lost. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're going to make me cry, bro. Stop. <laughs> you know? So, definitely, guys, once we get however you want to get the church set up, stuff like that, then we can open up the PayPal for them to make donations to start making it happen. Oh, jeez. Hang on. Yep. All right, guys. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes, I am. I'm holding it back, guys. I'm holding it back. I'm not. Right. <laughs> I am uh, <clears throat> definitely... Uh, I can't wait to have me a Daniel shirt. <laughs> oh, yes. Beautiful, beautiful, blessed morning. And put it together. All right, so this is catfish skippers. Dang it. Oh, damn it. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, Detroit's also uh, also saying that if y'all can make it up to Ontario on June 1st, they have a uh, handicapped fishing deal over there. So, uh, what's up, Albert? What's up, boss? <laughs> See what you think, what you're doing, because I was between mono and braid. Oh, awesome. 
man, I ain't seen a dialogue like this in a minute. <laughs> Made in Korea. I found that the center garage has barely ever been used. And you're wanting to use it? I'm going to... That friend of mine with special needs, he likes to come fishing with me, but his parents can't afford fishing gear, so anytime I find old fishing gear, I try to give it to them so that he can come out fishing and not have to worry about it. Yes, um, how well do you trust this reel? I know it was a reliable reel new. Yeah. As of now, I don't. I oiled it up, took it apart. I saw nothing wrong. The drag was still good. Mm -hmm. It was actually stored with the drag completely loose. So the guy who had it was smart. And how old is this? Uh, he this bought it. No, 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 mental capacity of about a 10 year old okay and i just take them and they usually use my gear or uh like another garage i was cleaning i found some old lightweight spinning reels i gave it to him but this is the first that i found that would be good for what i usually take them out to do a little heavier duty for the pier and stuff i take them to oh we definitely we got we gotta send it in to my rod wrapper to have it epoxy because all of this is about to come off. There's no epoxy yeah. holding the thread. Yeah. Um, I think it was, it was done before epoxy over thread was common. Okay, it's so common. how about this? Leave it here with me. I'll get my rod wrapper to epoxy all over that and I'll cover that. Um, as for the reel, and then we got leaders because. Curtis and everybody on the channel has donated a bunch of leaders, so we got leaders that we can help out with as well. Um, yeah, that real would definitely be out of his league right there. Um, yeah, you know, but, you know, he just comes out with me. Uh, I've actually put him on a couple bonnet heads and small black tip, never anything bigger than that, besides some redfish and stuff, which is the stuff I found and the stuff I have that's easy for him to use. It isn't conventional. Yeah. It's inshore stuff. Yeah. It's not... You know, surf fifty for big redfish stuff. So. Okay, so and and you're wanting to put braid on here for it him? was braid or mono. I know the reel's designed for mono. That's no, no, I'm no. I'm asking for his his capability because obviously working with braid yeah. has its issues. It, it, it's it's mainly used mono because that's what I put on the reels he uses. Okay, so, so that's why I was thinking mono. Yeah, and I know. That should hold a decent amount because the mono I took off there was 40 pounds. I mean, I was at it for a while taking the mono off of it. So I just don't know how much it would hold. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I've got. All right. So, first, let's pull the rod off yeah. so that way we stop handling that thread so it can get epoxied. Um, and I've got mono here that he can have. I got 15 pound test. I got, I mean, okay, so here's the thing. His capability, do you think the heavier mono would be more beneficial to what the way he fishes? It'd be or, beneficial to where we fish. 40 pound. Yeah. Okay. You so know, like 30, 40 pound, stuff like that. Okay. So and left. I just don't know how much of it pulled of that. This well, that's why I have the, the line counter here. So. You good, brother? Yeah. So, uh, I guess we got to get Daniel to to pose for a picture of that or catch it. You know, when he when he fired somebody, and then more than likely he can probably you know cut him out and then put it on some kind of background logo. And like I said, I, I, I don't know what his needs are or how it's signified. But well, uh, it's going to be, he's got microcephaly and uh, cerebral palsy. Okay. So what I would probably would like to do is put like his picture on the back with, you know, he's fired. Mm. And then put the two ribbons for microcephaly and cerebral palsy like they're interlocked to each other. Up mm. on the front shirt pocket. What if 
um, we do those ribbons all over the place, like big, big, small, like, you know what I mean? Like all over the shirt with those colors. That would be cool. You see what I'm saying? And, yeah. and then have, have his, have him, you're fired in, in, in the back kind of deal, or even in front too, like <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, a. I'm getting, I got to get a hold of, uh, Andrew, the one that, uh, did my stickers. Uh huh. And I'm going to see about getting, getting him to do one for Daniel and put that one on the shirt with, you know, you're fired around it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Get how, how soon do you think you could get that together or, you know, uh, hopefully by next weekend, I'm hope I'm hoping, um, I don't know how busy Andrew is. Okay. Well, no worries, but, um, yeah, just let's, let's jump on that, man. That, that, that was awesome. <laughs> that yeah. was awesome so. <laughs> um, all right guys. So real quick, what I'm going to do, um, we got another special needs, uh, young man that goes fishing with Billy. And uh, we're going to really found a reel to give him. So we're going to donate the mono to him. And then we got the leaders that have been donated through the, the winnings here that we're going to help him out with as well. So that way, when he goes out with Billy, um, he's got leaders. So is that 30 pound or 40 pound? Okay. You want to try with 30 first? See what we get. <coughs> oh, I, I don't have any 30. We'll try with 40, see what kind of capacity we get. No, we get. Yeah, 200 yards on it would be good. But. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Detroit, I would love to, but if that's in, in Canada, I, I, I'm I not allowed in Canada. <laughs> Did he go there with Curtis? Is that why he can't go to Canada? <laughs> no, there's no. I got, I got kicked out of Canada a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we got to we got to know the background. <laughs> oh, huh. I'm right. curious who's the yeah. where these have been sitting here. These old pen spinners. Uh, they've been donated to us for spooling videos and stuff like that. We just um, oh, we we did a lot of videos with them. But when we get more lines in, that's when we do more videos with them. So these are good reels. Yeah. Old school pen saltwater specials. Mm-hmm. No doubt on that. So matter of uh, fact, this is about the same spool that Iowa has. Okay. You're talking about spool size? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, as you can no, tell, that, not, that secret will die with me. The reason why I got kicked out in Canada and banned for life. That will that will die with me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you can leave us a note on your deathbed so we can know. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely kicking old school with those memories. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, well, you know what? The hell with it. Uh, <laughs> you, you guys remember the story of Tim McGraw and that other guy that uh, stole those cops' horses? Yeah. Yeah, well, I kind of did the same thing in Canada to a bunch of Mounties. Uh, yeah, I super <laughs> to this day, them horses are still in the U.S. <laughs> oh, uh, they can't they can't deport back legally because they don't have their passport. <laughs> <laughs> well. Let's just say they're uh, they're they're down south somewhere. <laughs> Jeez. Golly. <laughs> yeah. And the sad thing is it wasn't just one horse, it was the whole stable. There was uh, 15 horses in that stable, and they, uh, they're uh, they're all down <laughs> down south. <laughs> uh, 
154 yards. That's, so that's good for what we'll be doing. You know, I usually pass it for him. I've been trying to teach him. He ain't, mm -hmm. ain't too good at it yet. He's getting there. Probably for that to try. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, Edgar, well, the whole stable. <laughs> it wasn't just one. It was the whole stable. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> mm. I would like to think about fishing with you sometime. It's just whenever we've not been together, he plays the drum. Oh, wow. He's really good at it, too. There you go. Yeah, All right. So we got that. Now we can get back over here. And we got some leaders for him as well. What's gonna do with the bag? Terry doesn't even know that story. <laughs> All right. Yeah, if I was gonna, if I was gonna, if they caught me, I was gonna make sure it was damn well worth it. I was gonna take that whole damn stable and. I got through the damn border and it was in uh, the Dakotas where I came through. Damn it. Okay. Hard life. So what's up, boss? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Bob. Yes, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, wow. Oh, you, you going to do some video? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Awesome, bro. Will you be safe on the road, brother? All right, let's. All right, so um, I just donated ten dollars to to help us out to help your buddy out. Uh, what size weight and stuff like that does he use? Well, depending on what we're good for, I use your double drops a lot with him. Mm -hmm. They're what I usually have spare of the double drop red leaders. Uh -huh. If we're fishing tall here, I'll throw you know, like a two, three ounce pyramid mm -hmm. nutrition out on the beach. Like I've taken them a couple times on pier. I used to throw five to six ounce on there. And it sticks to the nutrition. So we're trying to get him. Let me, give me a second real quick. Because I got to pull it from here. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, we got Curtis. <laughs> Oh man, I can't believe I told that story. <laughs> hey, that's a good story. I got some stories like that too. Waking up in Mexico, not sure how I got there, but you know. <laughs> well, that's what we used to do. We used to go across the border to go drinking at the bars, and uh, I've woken up in some strange places down there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I've got Curtis with seven liters for this. So we can set this up this way. And let me see what I got on the wall over here. <laughs> well, how about this? Come and come and pick seven liters from this wall that you can use, like on the beach or at Causeway and stuff like that. This wire leader won't ever hurt. Yeah, well, you got seven to pick from, and that's courtesy of Curtis. And then we got Jaime that paid for oh. some weight, so we got that, and I got some double drops here that we can definitely throw in there. Be right back. Yeah, boy. Awesome. 
All right, so oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, okay, I'm back, guys. Um, he's, he's picking out some leaders, and again, these were um, leaders that were from a fire drawing, and this one was Curtis that he actually won those leaders, and he's donated them back to us to donate forward, so that's what we're doing right now. And we also got a donation from Jaime for uh, 10 bucks, and so I'm matching that and adding more so he can have weight for both Causeway Pier and the beach when he does take him out there. So there we go. Awesome. Yes, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for something to present itself, and man, what a day. What a day. We get uh, uh, our teacher guy who does you know, a lot of uh, fundraising events like this and, you know, for special needs. And um, now we're going to help, you know, Jacob with our connection there. And uh, yes, and now we're going to help Russell. Yes, 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 yes. Excited, bro. I'm excited. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, well, words can't even describe what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> Well, I'm just glad that, you know, like I said, I, I didn't have a doubt. I did not have a doubt with James, you know, and that's why I made that phone call. Um, I just had to get him on the phone and, he, you know, he answered and he, he was real quick. He's oh, yeah, we do this. this, this, this. And I thought, I was like, yes. I was like, yes. Um, once we get his, his company info and stuff like that, and that was the thing, too. He said that normally he does it, but he don't ever – Tell them that they got to do this. They got, and I was like, "Well, it ain't you know? It's not about that. It's about the guys that are on the channel that see when a company is willing to do this. That you know, that's where we decide to spend our money with guys that are willing to pay it forward. You know, when they can. You know what I mean? Obviously, we all get hit. We all get hit hard where we can and can't help. And so." You know, when we can, we're definitely, we're definitely about it. You know what I mean? And, and right now, you know, I'm also reco recovering from a very dead period of time of no sales and stuff like that. But with everybody's help here on the channel, we are definitely climbing out of that hole and, you know, being able to make a, a phone call and help out when we can is definitely a blessing. So, but again, guys, you know, it's without y'all, without all y'all on the channel, we would not be able to keep doing what we do. So... Uh, with you know, it, it, I'm telling you guys, that, you know, we get a lot of props, but it, it comes back to y'all doing what y'all do. So, yeah, we just we we play the middleman. <laughs> play the middleman. So, yeah, yes. I'm excited, bro. I'm excited. So, what's my best knots? Well, I got the anaconda knot. I got the holocorda holocore. I got holocorda mono. I got the. Uh, the end of the line, you know, not there. We got the bimini to a tiger paw. Uh, <laughs> you gotta be a little more specific at what you want to get at. But let me let me grab another tray of weight so we can. Actually, you know what? Let me get this on. Uh, well, let me weigh this first. <laughs> sit there and snap a picture or something and get a video or video him and get him to say everybody's fired and you know try to screenshot it at the right time and get him to actually make that uh, that deal for me um actually I mean, if you try to take a picture uh -huh. he runs away 
So why don't you set up your camera on video? You know, because he because he's looking at the phone, right? When when we're on this, yeah. So put it on video of of you and him like that, and on record, and then come over and tell him, hey, come fire everybody on the channel. He'll come and he'll come do it, and then you can put it into like the power director or send it to me, and I can actually go screen by screen, and actually I can I can screenshot right off of that and that way you can control exactly when he when he got his hand up and doing what he's doing that we could do yeah because you gotta you gotta record it to be able to 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 put it into that edit mode so you can catch it like that so yeah yeah okay I don't think I'll be able so, to get, it, get him to do it right now, though. No, 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 no. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, once when, he's, like, off his cartoon or whatever, do do a regular camera, you know, recording yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and, just, and just make it seem like he's going to come and fire everybody kind of deal, you know, so. Yeah. I have to be sneaky yep. about it. <laughs> yeah. Sneaky, sneaky. Hey, you, you need bags for those? That's what I was thinking. I was yes. trying to get them separated so they're not. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And if you need the bigger bags, they're right there. There's a, see, okay, but the little thin mono, then they're okay in the little bags. But if it's the heavier mono, throw them in the bigger bags because you don't want them all pigtailed up. I mean, they're free, but still, you, you take care of the gear. So, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'm, dude. <laughs> this is exciting, man. This is really exciting. So, again. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jaime is saying that he could pull them out of the screen with without the background and stuff like that too. Oh yeah, the the newer phones they do that as well. So yeah. Uh, well, you say, I, I, I don't, don't know, know how to do that. The so what? So I don't have that capability. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I don't either. Yeah, I don't think I'm smart enough. I couldn't figure it out if I tried. <laughs> got a hammer. I got a hammer. Hell <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So does he do stickers too? Ooh, um, blue bell yet. Uh, if not, I mean, I, I don't have a problem going through Sticker Mule. They make some pretty damn good stickers, so. I I don't know, to tell you the truth. So, yeah, because that's who made these, is Sticker Mule. I, I, liked, I liked the way he did that, and to do, Heim, uh, to do uh, Daniel like that would be, that'd be pretty phenomenal, too, man. Uh, let's see. All right. I sent him a text. Uh, just uh, he'll, he'll answer me pretty quickly and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, no, that's gonna be I'm pretty gonna be pretty stoked. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to teach my guy how to cut these weights because I just clipped one off and it still had this much extra. And it don't seem like much, but that's adds up a thousand weights. Yeah. Yes. Most definitely does. Okay, so CJ sent something to the chat. All right, can you can you check that bus? Because I'm little little preoccupado. Oh, I know, I know. Um, I don't want to say what it is out here. Um, but I need all the blue ranchers. If you're in the in that chat, which y'all should be, everybody that's that's in here, go in there. I want to hear a yes or no in the chat. Yeah, man, what a day, what a day. Those were some good push-ups last night. 
Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Eight plus push ups. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Mm -hmm. Screenshot, go to gallery on picture. <clears throat> okay, which which phone are you doing that off of, though? Because he's telling us how to do it. I know Samsung's and Google Pixels will do it. Apple yeah. doesn't yet. There you go. But not only the Apple doesn't. Yeah, it'll be about five years before Apple catches up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a bit. The only reason I have an iPhone, this is the first one I've ever owned, and I absolutely hate this thing. Was I wanted to put a phone that was the size of a tablet, mm. and the Apple is the only one that produced a phone that wasn't that big. The phone that was small. Yeah, I don't like big phones. Oh yeah. Hey. And a twenty dollars. Okay. So. Oh my God! Just the SC. Billy, did you put your boat in over there on the chat? Oh yeah. The what? No, he didn't. You haven't gone to the chat yet. He need. Oh no, no. I, I know you're saying that. Was busy doing yeah, he he was bagging up the leaders that were donated to the young man that he's helping out. Oh. Right. But yeah, I cracked the whip over here. He's on it now. Okay. He's on it now, like to check the the combo. Oh, <laughs> they, yeah, they they need your boat real quick. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, he got it. In. <laughs> that was all, that was all. It doesn't take me but two seconds to type it. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh man. <laughs> I'm a grandma over here doesn't know where the Y button is. Let's see. Yeah, no, the, the only way you'll be able to see the Blue Wrenchers is the uh, comments and stuff is if once you get to the Blue Rancher status boss. So once that happens, then, uh, then you'll, you'll be part of the, the uh, messenger that we have set up for it. It's so. very elite group chat, nothing inappropriate ever. <laughs> Sultan Edwin's mother all day. <laughs> see that one of the last sticker? No, that's I didn't. You should see first page. No, by the time I got I got done with the live video feed, I finished off what I had to do here, and then I served me a bowl of cereal with some milk, and then added my ice cream. That was awesome. That was so awesome. I made sure to send... Uh, no. Name escaped me. Jacob. Jacob, a picture, right? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. But we need to set up to set him up with Bluebell at his house. I know. I mean, I know how to make homemade ice cream, but it ain't the same. Yeah, it just tastes so much better knowing that you didn't you didn't have to make it. But again, too, you know, I mean, I take a lot of pride in my food. Like I, I, I know when I'm I'm cooking it. Yeah. Yeah. Bread and cheese on it for lunch. Ooh, that sounds good. That sounds real good. All right, so uh, I'm gonna sit here and Yes, they're over here, right at right on the end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I seen that, Jaime. Let's see. Uh, let me check that real quick, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at uh, what Curtis responded to on there. Uh, Curtis is in the live? <laughs> yeah, he's in the live. It's... Curtis, you need to listen to that song I sent you. 
Okay, I'm, I'm gonna have to double back and check on that. I don't see which one which one he was being specific about and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. I'm see. I'm wondering though too, because they're they're kind of talking about doing the screenshot off of the, the channel right here. Um, but I'm, think, I'm thinking it would be better if it was like, yeah, it's got to be a camera one. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be to work resolution. Work. Yeah. <laughs> it is pretty solid advice. Right, right. And even one sometimes too many. <laughs> yeah, no, no joke on that. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no doubt for sure. Um, definitely want to once we, we can cross this bridge of whatever picture we're going to use and have that set up. But I think doing it with the ribbons all the way around kind of deal will really be something different, you know what I mean? Kind of, kind of like the, the puzzle pieces that they do for autism and stuff like that. Cause you automatically recognize that kind of deal. You know what I mean? And then when they do like a single ribbon, like you were saying, those that recognize it, recognize it. But if they don't, then we, maybe we can create something new that if people can start recognizing that deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I know. Well, because. Well, I mean, because he's not, he's not autistic. Yeah. So, I mean, and microcephaly is not very well known about. So, microcephaly yeah, basically Burke. means that uh, his head was not fully developed, so he has a very smaller than average uh, head size. Uh, mm. All okay. of the way, sometimes how he's a smart aleck, you couldn't tell. That actually kind of reminds me of my sister's best friend since they were children. She has uh, MS, multiple scler sclerosis. Multiple English sclerosis. Is not good. Thank you. Um, Maybe it's because that big old trip hazard you yeah, got in you your know lip is catching you know, your speech right there. <laughs> don't worry about it. I ain't got to worry about that. Um, but uh, she's going in for a heart surgery this week on Friday. Mm. They got to go in and basically the rest of her growth is stunted, but her organs are still growing. Mm. So her heart is getting too big. It's having some issues and they're having to go in and like cut off pieces and some repair some valves. Wow. Yeah. Her, uh, I, I'm you know, she's my sister's friend, but I know a grandfather real well. Me and him build cars together. And, you know, I worry about her a lot about that. All right. Well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just thinking of a way to make, you know, I mean, obviously, if you know Daniel, you know, it's, if you know, you know kind of deal. But at the same time, you know, like ALS or Roger, like I never even knew about that until Roger, you know, brought it up. So for yeah. us, if we're going to make a statement, let's make a statement to raise awareness to where, you know, more help can come that that direction. And also, too, um, maybe it might be the, the future of a raising awareness kind of deal like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think your video just posted. Which one? It says, got more work. Who will be the lucky winner? It just posted. What do you mean? Well, it just popped up on my feed. Oh, barely. <laughs> We're only all two hours into it. Damn man. Oh, well. <laughs> so YouTube is definitely dropping the ball on our my video feeds going out there and stuff like that. Um, but I'm wondering if if it has to do with anything that we've been changing the format of which we've been going live to, if that may no. be like that 
that reset it a little bit. So no, what, that was a Google notification. Sorry, that wasn't YouTube. Oh, okay, okay. So, but Google say that you 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 should be ranked at the top three of uh, what you're doing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> then they want you to pay for that uh, position. <laughs> yeah. Right. Dirty bastards. Oh man, I can, dude, I dude, I shut them down hard on that. I haven't gotten a phone call yet about it. Uh, <laughs> maybe they finally got me deleted off of it. But what's crazy right. is I still get um, uh, notif not notification, but I still get uh, people coming in that they still find me through Google. Um, yeah. Hey, Leo. Whenever you search up the tackle stores in Corpus Christi, you're the number three in the world. So everybody right, um, in the Blue Ranchers in the chat, we'll we'll get on here after the live sometime later tonight and we'll we'll discuss what we're talking about in the chat. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but I'm also waiting on a text back right now. Um, if it if it goes through, uh, we're gonna bring on um, Rachel. She's the one that is helping out with the desalinization pro project, Rachel Caballero, and she's also running for the, uh, for the county commissioner position. So that way we can have somebody that's on our side to help us stop these guys from doing what they're doing and wrecking our city. So. Um, yeah. We definitely, there's a few ways for us to uh, speak out, but the main one is going. Okay. Um, what was I saying? I got sidetracked. Sorry. Um, uh, allergies. So, um, yeah, no, she, she's running for that, but she's also been, you know, the one to meet up with all a bunch of these representatives to get people together to organize, to raise awareness about it and stuff like that, because, I mean, it is crazy. So, um, Jacob, let me let you go, boss. I will send you a link when I get off with her, but I need to bring her on because tomorrow is the meeting, so this is pretty important for everybody. So, I'll see you in a bit, brother. All right, man. Uh, I do, but I got to go. Uh, All right, guys, I'm back. So, um, I just sent her to the link and we'll see if she can join us real quick to, to talk about this because this is really important, guys. This is uh, the livelihood of a lot of people and, uh, you know, and y'all's enjoyment, too. Y'all come into the city and then you won't be able to go to those spots in the bay to go out and enjoy it. And then also, too, how much is this going to cost? Like, they, could, they, they still... Anything built on the salt water is going to be in a bottomless pit. It's going to continue to to break down and wear down and all of that. And it's just, it, this is going to be so costly on our end. All right, here we go. All right. What's up, Rachel? How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm at one Working, of working. Excuse, excuse my dirty hands, but. <laughs> Dirty hands make clean money, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've been kind of telling everybody about the meeting tomorrow with the desalinization project, but by all means, please re-inform everybody what's going on, what can happen, and what they can do um, when they get there. Or if they can't be there, is there other alternatives to them being able to voice their concerns or comments? Okay. Um, just a quick history for your folks. Um, my name is Rachel Caballero. I've actually, um, when they shut down our beaches in 2020, that's whenever I got involved in all this political crap. 
And now three and a half years later, almost four, like you, you, you'd, you'd be surprised to see at how they are trying to take over our coast and take our water. Um, so this desalination plant they're saying is for us, right? We're running out of water. That's what the city's been saying. Like they have us on stage two, two drought restrictions and we can't water our lawns. We can't, we get fined if, if we do and, and all these other things. However, they are still selling huge chunks of our water to heavy water users currently. For example, we're on stage two drought restrictions, right? The community. Well, they're selling almost 9 million gallons of water a day to this um, ammonia plant in Robstown and Cow Allen. So how do you make sense that we're on drought restrictions, but they're selling million, millions of gallons of water per day to heavy industry water users? So are we out of water? Or are we not out of water? The second thing is, is that in attending all these city council meetings with the consultant, Freeze and Nichols, who isn't from Corpus, they're out of, out of, out of town. I want to say they're out of Houston. Um, those guys have already been paid by the city of Corpus Christi. They're, they've been approved to be paid up to $9 million. So Let's put it in a perspective here. This consultant is getting is getting paid up to nine million dollars from with using our tax dollars. So are they going to tell the city what they want to hear or what is right? Of course, they're going to tell their highest paying client that this isn't going to hurt the bay and it's not going to hurt our water. So there, this that consultant, Freeze and Nichols, is refusing to get an environmental impact study because they're saying that the federal government does not require one. So no environmental impact study. Now we have the the different. Um, hold on a second. Let me open this up real quick. Um, they, so they're refusing to do the environmental impact study. Uh, they're comparing this desalination plant to one that's in Carlsbad, California, that has been having that's had to be shut down multiple times because the brine is clogging up the system because they weren't expecting that much brine. This happened in Dubai too, where the they're ruining the Persian Gulf because they did not uh, account for the excess brine. This particular desalination plant. The power that it's going to take is like a little, it's like a small town. So you know that our power rates are going to go up too once that thing comes online. This desalination plant is experimental. There's never been one done on the earth. Never one that is in an enclosed bay. The Tampa Bay one, that's right off of the Gulf. Like it, it doesn't, it's not in, in an enclosed bay. Same thing with the Carlsbad, California one. So the intake and the outtake, the way that the permit reads right now, is within 900 feet of each other. So you have an enclosed bay, right, where we already have problems with circulation within our bay. That's that's why it's it's murky looking, because we don't have enough of... Um, of a whirlwind to pull to pull it out it kind of just stays in a circle in our bay because there's nowhere for it to like escape for lack of a better explanation so that's why our our corpus christi bay looks murky all the time because there's not enough pressure to push out the the bad water and and, and, may, and keep it clear so the intake and the outtake are going to be within 900 feet of each other like that that is, this is just this does this this is this is it's asinine even even people like you and i with me i don't know if you have a college degree i don't it, this is science 101 how are you going to put intake and outtake within 900 feet of each other and not expect some ramifications of that i'm not i can't see the comments i'm gonna have to put my old lady glasses on uh, yeah the next no thing is, um, the permit also states that it's 
for industrial use. So this is not for the community. So what's happening tonight at, or t- I'm sorry, tomorrow night, Thursday, April 18th at the American Bank Center is the TCEQ is having a public hearing so that the community can go and basically state their concerns, state their opposition and say, hey, we don't want this in our Corpus Christi Bay. We've already told them that they're not listening to us. We want them to take this out to the Gulf um, and and we don't want to have to pay for it. That's the other catch is industry is a for-profit multi-billion dollar corporations, but they want for us, the community, Corpus Christi residents to pay for it. The numbers that we've seen so far within the next four to five years, our water rates are going to triple and possibly quadruple. That is what already happened in Carlsbad. And that that's just the water rates. That's not the electricity rates. That's not the Property interest taxes. of it being everything. Everything is going to go up in taxes, not in value, in taxes. Yep. So that is a huge deal besides them killing the bait. Like, I mean, that is the Bay of Corpus Christi, even though you may not believe this, is a huge revenue of mm-hmm. tourism. Mm-hmm. Of seafood production, of seafood availability, like a, a mm-hmm. ton of it comes from that bay, guys. And like like um, Rachel was saying, you know, there's not enough water circulation in there to compensate for the amount that they're going to pull out and dirty and put back into that same water. Right now, like I said, we've had brown tides that go in there, and everybody that has lived along the, the Corpus Christi Bay... And all those surrounding towns have had a deal with brown tide where they end up in hospitals because Mm -hmm. they're the respiratory problems that it causes. So right now, that's without a desalinization plant. Put one in there and you can multiply that times 10, if not by 20 times over how bad it's going to be. And this will be year round Mm -hmm. and would take decades and how many hundreds of billions of dollars to fix? Like, and then we're going to pay for it. So we can't really sue the city because we're the ones that are agreeing right. to it's okay. Right. While these million, multi billion dollar operations are going like this. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. And they're destroying our bay. And here's here's what the city of Corpus is doing they're throwing <laughs> hundreds of thousands of dollars to, towards this desalination like package to package it to people. We need the water. We need the water. You know, we're running out of water. That's not true because if we were running out of water, they wouldn't be able to sell the little water we have left to corporations like the ammonia plant that they're trying to put in Robstown and Cal Allen. Right. If we don't have the water, why are they selling it to these foreign to boot foreign? Because the ammonia plant that they're trying to put in Robstown and Cal Allen is out of India. So these are all foreigners and how this is how they're selling it to people. Well, we need industry here locally. We need industry. Industry is the machine for economic development. Like we need them because it, it prospers the community. We did an analysis. I did an analysis on population growth here in Nueces County for the last it's 2015. We've had zero population growth here. So all these refineries that are saying, hey, we're bringing in employees, like we're we're hiring people. We're, we're, we're providing jobs. That's not true. It's not true. They hire people initially. Once the construction is done, they're gone. And then you have the same 1,500 people, the same 1,500 people who are working there, continue to work there forever. Because they never leave. Refineries don't have a high turnover. It's the same dudes working there for 50, 60 years, which is fine. Nobody has a problem with that. The problem is, one, we don't want our bay destroyed. And two, we don't want to have to pay for it. And that's what we we need to go to, to this meeting tomorrow night. As many fisher people as possible. I'm, a, I'm on a fishing team, you know, and I, I, I just, I, I, I can't understand why more people aren't getting involved in this. Um, because 
What's going to happen is if we think it's going to just destroy our bay, remember, we're an enclosed bay. What's on the outside of the bay for us? You have Portland, Rockport, Port Aransas, Ingleside on the bay. You have all of our main tourist attractions that are going to be the, on the receiving end of this brine. They're going to destroy it, the entire coastal bend region. It's not just here, like in those areas. Think of Baffin all the way down to mm -hmm. where it finally reaches, you know, uh, the Mansfield uh, jetty out there on the south side of the island. Mm -hmm. Like this is. It's going to destroy the whole the whole Gulf Coast right there. And then once it finally reaches the water, it's going to have so much momentum, it's going to kill the outer the outer coast right there. Because, mm -hmm. yes, we do have an influx of water there, but all it's doing is it's going to move it along the coast like red tide. When mm -hmm. red tide got affected in, in our areas, how many months did we have to put up with that? Mm -hmm. And they're, and months, they're saying that this months. is... This is here, even the Heart Institute is saying that they, they don't, they say it's a bad idea. That it, it why aren't they, destroy our why, sea life. Why and aren't they have, showing up to, to these meetings, though? I've yet to see one show up to the meeting to talk against it. I've yet to see Texas Parks and Wildlife go out there. I've yet to see CCA go out there. CCA, I mean, like here, here's the thing with those, the Texas Park and Wildlife will never go against their own people. Because Texas Park and Wildlife, you know with the turtle situation, they're trying to get the turtle program shut, shut down, so that way they can shut down our access to our, Is for? our people. You, Albert? So, oh, okay. Albert? Okay. Texas Park and Wildlife has not been Thank on you. our side for a minute. Yeah, but they're real quick to, to put fishing regulations on us. I wonder how many, like, endangered species are in those waters, both birds you know, marine life and stuff like that. And yet there's, they have not set a peak. There's estuaries. I mean, these thing. people. I'm, I'm, I'm in on the channel because I'm trying to listen to you, trying to listen to her at the same time. Comment yeah. on the channel. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I got my buddy uh, here and he's trying to talk to me at the same time yeah, you're trying to talk. And I was like, yeah, so Jaime well, said something. So I'm trying to trying to get into it. Yeah, basically okay. yep. what we're trying to do is get TCEQ to do their job, which is deny this permit because it is going to destroy our bay. It's going to destroy the estuaries. It's going to destroy our nice. It's going to destroy our sea life. It's going to, you know, people come here to bird watch even, which, you know, I knew but didn't know. Um, and I... I I, I feel like they are trying to turn us into a, we're a sacrifice zone and they're trying to turn us into an industrial dumping ground like Bay, Bay City, like uh, Texas City, uh, Detroit, Flint, um, you name it. And um, I, I just feel like it's um, we're, we're in trouble here and we have to show up. They, they chose a, a room at the American Bank Center that seats 900 people. Our, I think that they did that on purpose. So if only 200 people show up, it looks like it's empty. So we we have to show up in droves. We have to make our voices be heard. We have to call out these these corrupt elected politicians who are advocating for this. Um, the list of people that are advocating for this, I can tell you right now. Um, it, isn't there a like a big big rich rich person behind one of these companies several of these companies that's coming in as well i don't know if she heard me she might have had to get off her phone there for a minute but uh yes guys we are definitely in a lot of trouble here and we need to we got to show up guys we really do and uh i'm actually gonna get with uh yeah we, we, i can hear you but i can't see you <laughs> uh, i don't know how do i fix that um did you turn off the camera i did not okay. i look funny too hold on a second can i get out and join back yeah okay let me try that all right
But let's see. Yeah. She's going to try to get out and get back in. If she can't, then I will resend her another link uh, to get back in here and stuff like that. So give us a second. How much of that water go into the neighbor? Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no worries. Okay, uh, I don't know if you heard me a little while ago. Um, but they were talking about some, uh, there's a rich, lot, a big money person that's behind this plants and stuff. And is this all in correlation with them and doing what they're doing? I think, uh, Russell, did you, did you post that comment to the channel? Um, let me see. Let me, uh, Billy put one comment I have down is Baffin. They have the islands that they can't go within a hundred yards of the, the bird island sanctuaries. And how much of this water is going to go into those areas if they have those bird sanctuaries there and stuff like that? Like, why aren't these guys stepping in? You know, they created all of this to keep us off of it, mm -hmm. but they're not stepping in when these big businesses are threatening it directly. Like, yep. Well, from what I'm understanding, this is all coming down from uh, the state level, the federal and state level. So, for example, Greg Abbott is not doing anything for us. Todd Hunter is not doing anything for us. And then our local reps are not doing anything for us. So you have the instigator of all of this desalination stuff was Barbara Canales. So when you put it together, she's the one that shut down our beaches. And now she's the one pushing for these, de these this desalination plants. Between her and what used to be the CEO of the port, Sean Strawbridge, they are the masterminds behind trying to destroy our area. Sean Strawbridge is from California. They've already, already destroyed everything over there. So now they're coming to our coast to do the same. So you have, these are the city council. We have, you know, the mayor, Paulette Guajardo, is for this desalination plant. Uh, Michael Hunter. After. Who's after. After she'd been called out for saying she, you was vote her it. in, mm -hmm. she was against it. But now that she's in there, now she's mm -hmm. in their pocket. So she's yep. for it now. So she yep. lied to you. Yep. Okay. She lied Continue. to us. She lied to all of us. And then you have Michael Hunter, who's Todd Hunter's son, who you can't make this up. It's like an, it's a cesspool. Everybody knows everybody and everybody's related to everybody or having sex with everybody. So you have Michael Hunter. You have um, Mike Pusley, who has is self-proclaimed an industry mouthpiece. Um, he doesn't care about the ramifications that it's going. He's, he's, he's got, he, we have him on a recording say, I don't care. Build the desalination plants. Hurry it up. So Mike Pusley is an enemy. You have Everett Roy, who's also in favor of it. You have Roland Barrera, who's also in favor of it. Dan Suckley. Gil Hernandez says he is not in favor of it being in the Bay, but out in the Gulf. Sylvia Campos is against it being in the Bay, and she's against desal entirely. And so is uh, Councilman Jim Klein against it entirely. Now, on the county commissioners, you have Brent Chesney, who is for it, Connie Scott, who is for it, and John Mades, who is for it. And I don't know about Jag or Robert Hernandez. Um, so basically, we have a bunch of sold out politicians who are in favor of destroying our area. And I wish that there was a way that we could get this information out to more people faster. Um, but this is where we are right now. Well, um, we did do Shark Radio the other day. We I kind of talked about it there a little bit, like I said. Um, it's definitely a lot more information that you bring to the table with us with it on this. Um, what I'm going to try and do is that tomorrow when the meeting is there, um, it is a public deal. So we'll be able to record uh, what I'll probably end up doing is go live on the channel. I that way they can't see nothing was edited or whatever in, and do it that, in that route. Um, for those that can't attend, is there going to be a public online forum where they can go in and voice their concerns the way they do at the county commissioner's court for the, the, uh, well, that's, what, that's what tomorrow night is. 
is to go voice your concerns. There's a way to write in your comments. I'm going to be honest with you. They're not as powerful as um, showing up in person, but we can, I can send that to you and you can put it into this, or I, I, I got it on my, my uh, YouTube login too, that I can cut and paste where to comment. But yeah. you know, whenever you start doing stuff like that and it's not in person, you know, that data can be manipulated. So that's the only concerning thing that I have on that. However, there's a lot of people that are in this feed that cannot go. You know what I mean? Uh, because, again, too, they're finding out short notice about this. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, we've been talking about it, but a lot of people are just chiming into the channel or yeah. finding out about it. Like the guys with Shark Radio. They just, found, they, they just found out about it a few weeks ago, and we just found out about it last week about the date on there, but I had to wait to get online with them to share that information. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, they did say that they want to do go online at the same time live on their deal and talk about it there on there. But again, like if, if I know being in person is one thing, but will they have a public deal where they can log in and talk over the computer like we did the last one? Or they're not even offering that. Mm -mm. Nope. You can only be there. You can you can write in your comments, um, but there's not going to be a way to like uh, web be be there on webmail or web access or anything like that. They're making it. Um, they they don't make any of these things easy. That's for sure. The thing is, is that I'm. What, this is what I'm telling the community: is that if we want to stop this, like if we wholeheartedly want to stop this. We have to replace every single politician in November that's on city council. We replace every single one of them. And this, it brings all of this to a screeching halt. Yep. Yep. Even if we're voting for some weirdo person, they, they get changed every two years. So even if we elect some rando and they're against D cell, that's fine because then that, that delays everything longer. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we just have, we have, but the thing is, is that these people who have been bought by heavy industry, their people know to vote because they, they're threatened with their jobs. Like they tell them, Hey, if you guys don't vote this way, you're not going to have a job in a year. And so it's intimidation. It's intimidation tactics and the industry is not going anywhere. What are they going to do? Lift up the six refineries that are on 37 and move them somewhere. They're not going anywhere. So yep. we, what we're what this what we want to do is we want to stop the money grab for one and keep them from destroying our Corpus Christi Bay, our way of life here. We're we're a water town, we're a beach town, you know, and I, they're they're trying to destroy it. Yeah, and and you know, and it's not just that Hillcrest community is also going to be destroyed. Like they're trying to put that right in their backyard. And it's funny. This ain't the first attempt to take out Hillcrest. Nope, this is fourth. like the fourth attempt already with different ways to try to get them out of there. Mm -hmm. And he raised the history of Corpus. You know, they, it's not okay. The whole city ain't built on Hillcrest, but Hillcrest is one of the oldest communities in, in Corpus Christi. And they're trying to erase it. They're trying to do what they do in other States by erasing the history. And it's, they are, they really, really are crossing some bounds. And, you know, I, I hate to say, but this is a devil's tactic right here because, you know, this is the body of Christ. Corpitos mm -hmm. is the body of Christ. Yep. And by filthing it and destroying it is going to take away a huge portion of what we believe in, guys. And I have seen it where major storms come in and you will see on the radar a bubble around the city of Corpus Christi and the, the whole, the whole storm will go around. It will literally split up and create a bubble. And I've taken screenshots of this and I have it on, on my mother phones that got destroyed. I have seen this time and time and time again, mm -hmm. but this storm is brewing from the inside guys. It is festering in here. The devil is taking a hold and you have to stand up and fight for it and fight against it. Because right yeah. now, these these guys, and, and here's the major thing, too. All these guys that are voting for it don't live here currently. Nope. They are 
they they as soon as it goes bad, they're out. The city manager, and then they don't the care. City manager, it lives. He's from Connecticut or something, and he lived in San Antonio for ten or twelve years. Destroyed a bunch of stuff in San Antonio. Has a RICO investigation where they, he's involved in a lawsuit where they embezzled a hundred million dollars from the city of San Antonio <laughs> taxpayers. So the city manager, our city manager is garbage. He's horrible. He also tried to do this thing last two weeks ago where he was trying to sequester and 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 control public comment. That a city staffer was going to listen to public comments before we were allowed to public comment to make sure that our comments were city business, city related business. I mean, he, they're making a mockery of us because we don't have a lot of people involved in the political system down here because we're all living our lives. We're all trying to get, raise our kids. We're going to church. We're taking our kids to practice. We're trying to get their, get them into good schools. And while we're busy doing that, our own elected officials are, are, are excuse my French, are chingalaying us in the background. And as they, as they turn, look at us and shake our hands and say, hey, we're, we, we're looking out for you. You know, the guy, Drew Molly, that's in charge of this entire project, his name is Drew Molly. He's only been working with the city for a year. And he's out of Houston. He's never been in charge of a desalination project, ever. And they're going to let this guy run the show at a $750 million. Like we're, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. And we need for people. And the great thing, you've said this multiple times on multiple airings, the city cares more about tourist dollars than they do our own. So if you don't live here and you're not from here, I implore you guys to please reach out to city, our Corpus Christi City Council. Tell them we don't want this desalination plant here. They need to take it out into the Gulf and they need to leave and they need to make industry pay for it. How much? Okay. I remember they started out at one price. Mm -hmm. Obviously that has changed. Mm -hmm. I know the paperwork has changed because it went from, you know, a small amount of pages to an, an, an increased amount of pages. So how much are they requesting now that comes out of our pocket, guys? Like, the, the, <laughs> uh, it went. It started off at two hundred and fifty million, and now it's seven hundred and fifty million. But here's the catch: the numbers that they're providing to the public are for five million gallons of water per day, and not the ten million gallons of water per day that is the actual projection. So we're they're telling us seven hundred fifty million, but everybody doing the numbers back here in the background. It's going to be a $1.5 billion project when it's all said and done. And they're going to, they want for us to pay for it. $1.5 billion. Yep. And we're not going to get any kind of relief out of this, guys. This is a bill that you're voting for by staying quiet, mm -hmm. by not being proactive in this. And, and then you're going to be upset. I mean, right. Albert, so right now, let me let me explain to you what's happening. Right now, we only have out of 300 and 375,000 people in Oasis County, only about 218,000 are registered to vote. Of the 218,000 that are registered to vote, 40% of those people vote. We're not voting. You know, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and I get people that like, hey, I need to go vote for the president. By the time any of that stuff is is trickles down to us, it's already been two more presidents that have changed out. Where the vote matters is here locally. We have to vote in local races because that's where we feel the immediate impact. How I I was so proud of our community when we ousted Barbara Canales. We one term, we let her be in there one term and we kicked her out. And that's what we need to continue to do in our town. Yep. The, 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 the truth needs to be put out there, what they are, who they are. Um, but also, too, guys, y'all got to pay attention. Like, like Rachel was saying, these guys are making immediate changes to your bank accounts, to all of our bank accounts. It is a huge... Oh, man, it's a huge... 
slippery slope that we are on and we are losing ground fast. And the faster we pick up speed going downhill, the faster it is going to be that it's going to wreck the whole system. And then everybody's going to be like, well, why didn't nobody say anything? Mm-hmm. We're well, here. We're doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I, I think we've been indoctrinated it, it, as a if, people. If, we've been indoctrinated to say like, hey, don't talk religion. Don't talk politics. Like those are like no nos. That's how they get us to to not be yeah. aware of what's happening. And we do have to start talking politics. Okay. Oh, it died. Well, thanks, Albert, for the time. I think it died. Guys, please get involved. I'll try to put something in the link. Um, have a good one. Oh, there you are. Can't hear you now. 